your Forge News uh, interview with Sheffield Central Labour candidate, Paul Blomfield. Hello, Paul. Hi, good to see you. Uh, Paul, I gather before you became an MP in 2010, you were the uh, general manager here at VSU. How does it feel to be back here? Well, it's always great to be back, and I'm back quite regularly, really, because I represent more students than any other member of parliament. So I do a lot on student issues, uh, raising the voice for people uh, in the House of Commons. Uh, on that point, what is it that Labour can offer students in, students in particular? Well, I think it's important, and I always try to make the point, that students are concerned about a wide range of issues. But I think we've got a very strong um, student offer, and that's been confirmed uh, with the manifesto launched to today. Um, we will abolish tuition fees. We will reintroduce maintenance grants uh, for those from poorer families, which were scrapped a couple of years ago by the Tories. Um, we will take a different approach to international students, which is something I've been campaigning on for the last six years to recognise the huge contribution that they make to our universities. We'll reverse the government decision to abolish nursing and midwifery uh, bursaries, which has seen a 23% fall of the number of applicants. So there's a, there's a lot for students. How do you feel, as a local MP, you can help students here at the University of Sheffield and even at Sheffield Hallam? Well, I hope they have done um, over the years. I mean, I meet regularly with the uh, elected student officers in both uh, universities. We sit down at the beginning of their year and talk about their priorities and how I can support them. I think that there are issues which kind of range from international students, which I've mentioned, uh, and that's that I've taken up after the student union raised it with me, uh, and that was way back in 2011, and we've been campaigning on it together uh, ever since. I can, ref I can take forward their concerns, for example, over the higher education bill. I was an active uh, voice in Parliament on a number of the issues on the higher education and research bill, um, raising many of the same concerns that students had about the teaching excellence framework, uh, and that's been centre stage for me for several months now. So there's lots of ways that I can raise student voice, and that's, that's important because, as, as I say, students are 30% of my constituents. The headline announcement um, by the Labour Party with regards to students would be the abolition of tuition fees, but what can the party, or you as a local MP, offer students that are already paying tuition fees and, have, um, and are at university at the moment? I think that's a, a good question. Um, and I think the problem is... You can't remedy historic injustice. Uh, this is a pledge for the future. It's a pledge for going forward. Um, and uh, those who entered under the Conservative regime sadly will uh, be facing those, uh, the terms that they have, uh, they have had. I mean, one of the things that I've tried to do um, and actively in Parliament pushed was the way that the government have been trying to change the rules because they screwed up so badly in their calculations, um, the offer that they made to students under current loans, um, they've had to change. They have effectively pushed more of the burden of repayment onto students through shifting the threshold at which repayments start. That's something that I've tried to change in Parliament uh, with colleagues. I tabled an amendment to the Higher Education Bill, which tried to make that sort of uh, practically fraudulent dealing um, illegal. Sticking with the commitment to abolish tuition fees, surely this is a case of Labour being able to promise anything because if you look at the polls, there's very chance, very small chance of Labour actually getting into power. Well, the polls aren't great, are they? Um, and it's an uphill battle. But politics is very volatile at the moment. Uh, and we've seen sort of five-point shifts in the polls over the course of a week. We've seen a significant improvement in Labour's position in the polls uh, since our manifesto was leaked and people began to see the policies. And I think as we go forward, the more we focus on those policies, uh, the more we can, uh, we, can, uh, we can achieve in terms of winning over public support. But these are not, in the way that the Liberal Democrats used to do it, um, the sort of promises of a party that doesn't need to worry that it won't be in power. There are, in terms of the overall spending commitments, £48.6 billion pounds of spending commitments, and those are balanced out by £48.6 billion pounds of tax changes. So it, 
the, the proposals absolutely balanced are absolutely credible. Are you fully committed to your party leader, Jeremy Corbyn? Well, I think it's public knowledge that I didn't uh, uh, vote for Jeremy in either of the leadership elections, but that's not unusual. Um, you know, there are plenty of Tories who don't like Theresa May, starting with Boris Johnson. Um, Nick Clegg's not very keen on, uh, on Tim Farron. The political parties have uh, an internal dynamic where you uh, have different views on, on, on your leader. But I've never criticised Jeremy publicly. I've always worked behind him. I've been a member of his front bench as a shadow minister um, over, the last, uh, over the last year. How did you vote in the EU referendum last year? Well, it's not just a question of voting. It's a question of campaigning. I mean, I campaigned relentlessly to stay in the European Union. I thought it was right for our country politically, uh, for our place in Europe and our place in the world. I thought it was right for our country Economically, I thought it was ripe for the sort of statement that it made about the sort of place we wanted to be. Um, and over several months, um, I spoke with a team of volunteers to 9,500 people in my constituency. I spoke at dozens of meetings. And here, we got a 70% Remain vote. And I was devastated by the decision to leave. Will, then, if you were re-elected as Sheffield Central's MP... Uh, vote to block Brexit at any opportunity should you get one? Look, the decision to hold a referendum, uh, I think, was a wrong decision. It was one that we were the only party that went into the last election not wanting a referendum. Uh, the Greens, the Liberal Democrats, along with the Conservatives and UKIP, campaigned for an in-out referendum and said we should accept the verdict of the British people. I regret the outcome of that referendum, but as a Democrat, I have to accept the verdict of the British people. And what Labour has been trying to do, and I've been in the forefront of it um, as a shadow minister for the last uh, period since last October, is challenge the sort of departure that the Tories seem to be leading us towards. They want the deepest possible rupture. They want to establish Britain as a low-wage, low-regulated economy on the, uh, on the shores of Europe. They want to take away people's rights, whether that's protection at work or whether it's protection of the environment. They want to sever the relations that we have with very many uh, important partnership organisations across the European Union, from um, Euro Eurotom, the Eurotom European Atomic uh, Energy Community, through to the European Medicines Agency. What we're saying is that although we've taken the decision to leave, it remains in Britain's interests that the European Union is strong and that we want the closest possible relationship with it as partners if we can no longer be members. And that's a huge difference from the Conservatives and why it's so important um, that the Labour voice comes through strongly in this election uh, and in the Parliament following June the 8th. Looking at the 2015 general election results, your closest competitors were the Green Party, why should students choose to vote Labour over the Greens? Well, students seem to be um, choosing to vote Labour, and I'm delighted by it. I mean, I've knocked on hundreds of student doors over the last uh, couple of weeks, and there's, there's great support. Um, the Greens were kind of second, kind of roughly kind of neck and neck with the Liberal Democrats um, and the Tories. They kind of all were between about 7,000 and 4,500 votes. Um, and uh, I secured 24,000, 17,500 ahead at the last election. And I think that many Green supporters and even Green Party members have told me that they're puzzled by the decision um, of their party nationally to parachute Natalie Bennett into Sheffield um, and to make my seat one of the top priorities because... As a party, they talk about the progressive alliance to defeat the Tories. And that sort of alliance between parties of the left is something I'm interested in. I set up a group in the last parliament called Labour for Democracy, which was exploring progressive pluralism. Um, like Natalie, I'm an electoral reformer. I believe in uh, proportional representation to give smaller parties more space. So people are puzzled that when the Greens are talking about their top priority being fighting the Tories... They're actually pouring their national resources into fighting my seat 
and also in Bristol West. Really excellent um, Labour MP Thangam Debenair. Is there anything that you would like to say to um, the students of this university um, with regards to the upcoming election at all? Well, the most important thing is to participate in the vote. Um, sadly, uh, the numbers of young people who participate, and I know not all students are young, but predominantly uh, young, young uh, the number of young people who participate in elections is low. Um, I've worked with the University of Sheffield. Together we launched um, a new initiative which is now seen as a, a national model to integrate student registration to vote with student enrolment at the university and that means we've got a higher level of registration in Sheffield than practically other any other university so what I'd urge people to do is to use their vote because if they had in 2015 if the under 24s in 2015 had voted in the same proportion as the over 65s We'd now have a Labour government and we wouldn't have had a referendum and we wouldn't have been leaving the European Union. This election matters. Use your vote. Well, Paul Blomfield, thank you very much. Good to talk to you. Thank you.